Hi, my name is Paul Nation. The publisher Seed Learning has published several of my course books, including one on timed reading for fluency. Today I want to talk about fluency development activities. Fluency development is one of the four strands of a well-balanced course and should occupy about a quarter of the course time. The fluency development strand should be divided into roughly four equal parts for each of the four skills of listening, speaking, reading and writing. And so what we're going to do today is to look at each of these four skills and to look at fluency development activities in general. Now, how do you become fluent? There are two major ways or two major paths to fluency. One of them I call the well-beaten path. Imagine you go and live in another place and you have to find your way from your home to your work. The first times that you do this, it's a good idea to keep following the same path. So to work out how to go from home to work and keep following the same track. And very quickly, you become used to following this well-set or well-beaten path. And that's one way to fluency, through repetition. There's another related way to fluency. Imagine after living in this new place for a week or two, you then say, well, instead of following the path I usually go, what I might do this time is to go a slightly different way and just change a little bit of it so that I learn a little bit more about the area I live in. And so each time you go to work from now on, you go a slightly different way each time. And what happens as a result of that is that you build up a rich and varied map of the area in which you live. And it's the same with language learning. We can become fluent through repetition or verbatim repetition where the same kind of path or the same material is repeated again and again so that we can become fluent with that. But the other kind of fluency development is where we read or listen or speak or write using material that is slightly different each time. It might use roughly the same vocabulary, cover roughly the same topic, but it's different from what we've met before. But it's also fam already familiar with us in some way or other. So these two approaches to developing fluency, the well-beaten path or repetition, and the rich or varied map or varied repetition, are two useful ways of developing fluency. Let's now look at fluency across the four skills of listening, speaking, reading and writing. We can develop listening fluency through a very useful activity which is called listening to stories. In this activity, the teacher sits down in a comfortable chair near the whiteboard and takes a book to read to the learners. Let me take a very useful book for you. Okay, so the teacher sits there and then starts to read to the learners. As the teacher reads, any words which the teacher comes across which might be unfamiliar to the learners because they might know their written form but not their spoken form, the teacher then writes on the board. As the story continues, the teacher repeats each sentence. So, for example, The sun shone bright on the Gabalin Mountains. The sun shone bright on the Gabalin Mountains. Two men walk slowly towards a river. Two men walk slowly towards a river. Notice that each sentence is repeated. The first time it's said somewhat quickly, and the second time it's said more slowly. 
This second repetition is for learners who have trouble hearing the first one. As the story goes on, the teacher then doesn't repeat the sentences or speeds up the, the repetition of the second sentence and doesn't write quite so many words on the board. Each time the teacher does this reading for maybe five or ten minutes. It's good to choose a really interesting story that the learners might get caught up in. You can find such books on the Extensive Reading Foundation website. These are books which are winners in the Extensive Reading Foundation Graded Reader Competition, which is held every year. They are really good stories. And there are stories at, from the 500 level up to the two or 3,000 word level. So it's not hard to find really interesting books. After the learners listen for a few minutes, the teacher then closes the book and says, to be continued. And the next class, the teacher opens again and the story continues. So it's like watching a program on TV which continues from week to week. As the story progresses, the learners can increase the speed, the teacher can increase the speed of speaking so that the learners listening is then getting faster and faster as they become more familiar with the story. Another useful fluency development activity for listening is called Quick Listens. And if you go to Sonia Millett's website, you will find lots of easy stories written within a very controlled vocabulary, followed by simple comprehension questions, which can be used for the Quick Listen activity. Speaking. The most useful fluency development activity is the 432 activity. In the 432 activity, learners work in pairs. One learner is the speaker and the other is the listener. The speaker speaks on a topic for four minutes while the listener listens quietly, looking very interested, but not saying anything. After four minutes, the teacher stops the activity, gets the learners to change partners, so learner B moves to a new partner, and so the listener then has a new speaker to listen to, and the speaker has a new listener to talk to. The teacher says go, and then the speaker speaks for three minutes on the same topic to the new partner. Now, once this finishes, then this is repeated with a two-minute talk. The 432 activity takes about 10 minutes to do. 4 plus 3 plus 2 equals 9 with a minute for the changes. And during that nine minutes, learners get nine minutes of speaking or nine minutes of listening. The pressure to go faster each time helps the fluency of the speaking increase. The 432 activity is a verbatim repetition activity following the well-beaten path because the learner says the same story again three different times but more quickly each time. There are speaking activities which use a varied map approach to speaking. That is, the learners can change what they say in small ways each time they do the speaking. This can include the use of memorized dialogues and with prepared talks. So whenever the learner repeats a dialogue, they can make some changes to suit any changes in the situation. Or when they give a prepared talk, they can make changes in the talk to suit the audience that they're talking to. Reading fluency. The well-beaten path approach to reading fluency is simply reading the same text again. A repeated reading activity can involve reading aloud. And so in reading aloud, the learner might read the same short text three times each time trying to read it a bit more quickly. Research on repeated reading shows that it is a good contributor to reading fluency. Most reading fluency activities, however, involve the rich and varied map approach to fluency. So in extensive reading, learners read material at the same level, but the material covers different topics and different kinds of writing, but is all written within the same controlled vocabulary. 
A speed reading course also uses different texts for each piece of speed reading. This is a rich and varied map approach to fluency development, where the learners meet vocabulary and grammatical features within the same proficiency level, but get faster and faster reading different texts. Writing. The well-beaten path to writing fluency is writing the same material over again. This is very good when practicing writing exam questions or writing material which has to be written many times in normal life. For a rich and varied map approach to writing, the activity of 10-minute writing is a very useful fluency development activity. In 10-minute writing, the teacher gets the learners to think of a really easy topic, something they're very familiar with. It can relate to material that they've already covered in class or in previous uh, language lessons. The teacher says, OK, are you ready? Go. And the learners try to write as much as they can within 10 minutes. They don't worry about errors. They don't worry about saying things in exactly the right way. They just carry on writing. And the best learner is the learner who writes the most words. At the end of 10 minutes, the teacher says stop. The learners stop and they count the number of words they've written. They then enter the number of words on a graph. And each time that they do 10 minute writing, they try to make the graph go up, that is, by writing more words. Each time the learners do 10 minute writing, they don't write the same text again, but they either carry on with the same story or content, or they write about something different. But they write about something that's easy and try to write as much as they can. Teachers should not mark 10 minute writing. This is because the focus is not on accuracy, but on fluency. The teacher can quickly look at a learner's piece of 10-minute writing and make some comment about the content, such as, that was really interesting, try and write more about that next time. Or, I didn't understand that particular bit in your writing, can you explain it more next time? So the focus in 10-minute writing is on quantity. It's a time on task activity where the learners try to write as much as they can. The goal is to make the writing graph go up. So we've looked at fluency development across the four skills of listening, speaking, reading and writing. Let's now look at the features of fluency development activities. Fluency development activities have four major features and I'm going to cover them in order of importance. The most important feature of a fluency development activity is that the material, the language material and the content in the activity should already be familiar to the learners. You don't get fluent by struggling with difficult language features. You get fluent by making the best use with what you already know. And that's the goal of fluency development. So the number one requirement for a fluency development activity is it should be easy. This is why speed reading courses are written within a controlled vocabulary and why activities like 432 and 10 minute writing use topics which are already very familiar to the learners. The second requirement of a fluency development activity is that there should be some push or pressure to go faster. So in reading speed courses, there is a push to get the learners to go faster because the learners want to increase their reading speed on their reading graph. In 10 minute writing, there's some push to go faster because the learners are trying to write as much as they can within that short time of 10 minutes. So a good fluency development activity is not only easy, but includes some kind of pressure 
to go faster than you would normally go. The third requirement of a fluency development activity is large quantities of practice. So 10 minute writing involves 10 minutes of writing and that's quite a lot of writing. A speed reading course involves passages which could be around 500 words long and that's a reasonable amount of reading. So fluency development activities should give the learners plenty of opportunities for input or plenty of opportunities for output. The fourth feature of a fluency development activity is that there is a focus on the message. That is, it is not language-focused learning, but it is a focus on communicating messages, either receiving messages through listening and reading, or producing messages through speaking and writing. We can now look at fluency development activities and evaluate them on how well they meet each of these four features. The features of easy material, pressure to go faster, quantity of practice, and message focus. Let us look first at the 432 activity. What makes this activity easy? This activity is easy because the learners choose a topic or the teachers choose a topic that the learners are already familiar with. The second requirement is that there should be some pressure to go faster. How is that requirement met in the 432 activity? Well, that requirement is met by having a decreasing amount of time with four minutes becoming three minutes and then two minutes. So this decreasing time provides a push to go faster. The third requirement of a fluency activity is quantity of practice. How does the 432 activity provide quantity of practice? Well, we have a four minute talk, followed by a three minute talk, followed by a two minute talk, so in the space of less than 10 minutes, the learner has done nine minutes of speaking. So that's, that's quite a good quantity of speaking output. The fourth requirement of a fluency activity is a focus on the message and on communicating messages. In the 432 activity, this occurs because the learner who is speaking has a listener who is listening to what they say. And each time they repeat the talk, they have a new listener. If the same listener was sitting there listening, we might expect the speaker to then start changing what they say to try and keep holding the learner's interest. So the reason then for changing the listener is so that the speaker has a chance to talk to a new audience and therefore can repeat exactly the same material again and still have a strong focus on the message. You're telling something to somebody who hasn't heard it before. So the 432 activity is a good fluency activity because it clearly meets the four features of fluency development activities. It involves easy material. It involves a push to go faster. It involves quantity of practice. And it involves a focus on the message. So let's now look at just one more fluency development activity to see how it meets the four features. We'll look at speed reading. How does the speed reading activity Meet the four features of easy material, a push to go faster, quantity of practice, and a focus on the message. What's the first feature? Easy material. How does speed reading meet that requirement? Speed reading courses are written within very controlled vocabularies. So, when choosing a speed reading course for a class, 
the teacher needs to make sure that the vocabulary level of the speed reading course is well within the learner's proficiency level. This is very important. You won't develop speed in reading by reading material which contains lots and lots of unknown words and deals with difficult, unfamiliar ideas. You become fluent because you read material that is easy for you to read and therefore you can go faster. So the fact that a speed reading course uses controlled material deals with that criterion of easy material. The second criterion of a push to go faster. How does that happen in the speed reading activity? In the speed reading activity, there is a time measure. So when learners read a text, they make a note of their time and then they convert their time into words per minute and put it on their graph. So the graph becomes a motivator for going faster. And the learners can see their graph gradually moving upwards. It's possible to draw a line across a learner's graph and say, once you reach a speed of 150 words per minute or 200 words per minute, you have achieved a really important goal in this course. And that can make the goal of going faster even more real for the learners. The third requirement of a fluency development activity is quantity of practice. How does a speed reading course provide quantity of practice? Well, it does this because a speed reading course involves a large number of texts and the learners carry on with the course a few minutes each class or two times a week or so over a period until about 20 passages have been read. Each passage is about 500 words long, so that means by the end of the course, the learners have read somewhere around 10,000 words. That's not bad for quantity of practice. The fourth feature of a fluency activity is message focus. How does the message focus occur in a speed reading course? Well, it occurs because the speed reading text is followed by comprehension questions. And these encourage the learners to pay attention to the meaning of what they're reading. And it provides them feedback with their level of comprehension. So a speed reading course is a good fluency development activity because it meets those four features which are typical of fluency development activities. Fluency development then occurs through a well-beaten path approach, through activities like rereading, speaking the same thing again, listening to the same thing several times, writing the same thing several times. And so this repetition approach to fluency is a good way of developing fluency. Another way of developing fluency is the varied and rich map approach. And easy, extensive reading, doing a speed reading course, speaking on different topics using 432, all of these can provide a varied approach to fluency development. So it's good to have a mixture of repeated activities and activities which take a varied approach to fluency development. Overall, about a quarter of the course time should be spent on becoming fluent. It's no good knowing a lot of the language if it's not readily available for you to use.